All right, everybody, I'm going to show you how to use our new texture changer tool, which is a pretty killer uh, tool we have in our PBR tool set available on the Unity Asset Store. Um, this tool will uh, allow you to change up to 16 different uh, parts of a single texture into a brand new material or adjust those uh, textures with uh, different colors or overlay colors or whatnot. It's a pretty powerful tool. It does take a little setting up, of course, um, but it's well worth it if you want to do something like change the uh, type of metal on a sword or, or the type of wood on an object or just uh, modify it slightly with the color uh, values. So we're going to use what we uh, left off with uh, in our last tutorial about the PBR converter. Uh, and uh, first thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this texture changer tool so that I don't have to go and uh, reset the values later. And we're going to call this 2D version 2B. Um, and under our demo items SFB, we have our uh, done character Ethan uh, PBR. Now it's important to note, this tool actually works with uh, non-PBR um, materials as well. Uh, we're going to be doing the PBR version, but if you have a legacy uh, uh, shader material that just has diffuse or diffuse normal, uh, then uh, buff diffuse shader, then you can uh, use this as well. You don't have to make it PBR at all. Um, so in this case, the PBR tools name is actually slightly misleading. Um, so now we've got our, our base pre Ethan prefab here, and we're going to change the plastic, the suit, and the SF, uh, and this SFB skin, which is the skin. Those are the three ch things we changed in the first tutorial on the PBR converter. So what we're going to do is just drag the uh, texture changer material onto those three sections. And uh, if you open up the texture changer, you'll notice a whole lot of options here. Uh, we're going to focus first on this last one, the main input. So this is the area where you want to put your default textures. Our textures are going to be under SF demo uh, items, SFB skin, and the SFB PBR converter. We're going to bring in our albedo. We're going to bring in our ambient occlusion, metallic roughness, and our normal map. Now I've made a uh, copy of the normal here because normal maps are of course in Unity uh, set as a normal map in the type. For our purposes in these, when you bring in the normal map, you don't want that. You want it to be a texture, otherwise the result will be quite unattractive. So make a duplicate of your, of your normal map and set it as a texture type uh, texture, click apply, and we're going to use that uh, material. If at any point you find uh, when you're working on this that something's wrong when you include the normal map, uh, double check that you're, make, you're using a normal that's set as a texture and not a normal map. That's uh, probably extremely important, something that uh, I'm sure some people get messed up on. So now we've got this material here and uh, uh, one thing we need is the color ID. Color ID is similar to the, um, to the uh, uh, other, the PBR converter tool where each color represents one part of the texture. Now you can have up to 16 now, and uh, their color values are listed right here so that you don't get confused. Number one, of course, is 255, 255, 255, which is pure white, then red, green, blue, and so on down the list using only uh, full values, half values, and null values of zero. So we're going to have to create this because one thing, we have a normal map that I've created already, uh, but it doesn't have a separation for the skin. So I'm going to add that right now. Here we go, the Cyber Kid Diffuse. Bring that up in Photoshop. Copy paste this over, and I'm going to select just the skin tones. I'm going to speed up the video for this. We're going to do the skin and the hair separately. I've got the skin and hair selected. One thing I need to remember, of course, is that uh, I don't know what color to use. So I know I've got already, in, I've got R, G, and B used, red, green, and blue. So I'm going to double check what color to use next in my uh, other tools, texture changer. We have R, G, B. Color 5 is going to be 255, 255, 0. And the hair, I'm going to make 0, 255, 255. So back in Photoshop, so I create a new. So 255, it's going to be yellow, new layer, let me just bring that in now, hide that and do the hair now.
right now, if I remove the diffuse, I've got a texture set that has, a, let's see, four, five, six different layers to it. So we're going to save this. This will be in the uh, uh, in the package as well. It's going to be a PNG, and we're going to call this Ethan Color ID Suit, uh, and we'll call this Texture Changer by TC. All right. So this will be in our package now, and we're going to load up our texture changer and bring our color ID in there, SFB, or demo items SFB, color shoot TC. We'll bring that in there. All right, now let's look at some of the other options here. Under the main input tabs, we have uh, the options to use normal, roughness, metallic, and AO, AO. If you don't have any of those, simply ignore those. Uh, features and later there's going to be maps exported for you. You can just delete those if you're not going to be using a PBR material. For now we are going to be using our texture map. So you can see the difference when we keep that there. And we're going to be using our roughness map, metallic, and a and a ambient occlusion. Now if you didn't want to uh, use the roughness map you can adjust this default roughness uh, to just for your visual purposes. Uh, and also you can invert your roughness map if you'd like to if you need to and you can invert the normal map if you need to. In most cases you won't have to do either of those things. Under the texture masking uh, tab you can mask out the texture of any of one of these. Now in this case the texture refers to the normal and ambient occlusion. Um, that way you can make a much more flat look so for Ethan we can just texture or remove all of them and you'll notice that it goes away on the suit. That's an option for just changing the, uh, the look of the model if you'd like. Uh, it's there for you if you'd like to use it. Now let's actually uh, put in a new material. We'll close that tab for now. The numbers with the colors are our material inputs. Now I've created a material using a material generator that's included in our weapons and objects pack number one. Uh, this is our base metal material. Uh, generator and I've created a silver metal that we're going to use. Um, we'll replace the, the maybe the sides, um, well, well let's re replace the entire um, object with it. So this is a, a silver metal that we uh, that I exported using that tool. If you don't have any uh, materials to use you're gonna have to acquire some. Uh, there's a bunch in the asset store and of course our weapons and armor pack number one does include uh, leather, wood, and uh, metal uh, material creators that you can use for for this purpose as well. Um, so let's bring in, just like before, our albedo. Again, you don't want to use a map that's written as a normal map in the, in the settings. Uh, so normal map set as a texture, metallic roughness, and our ambient occlusion. Next, we'll go up to uh, uh, our cu main customs and select that we're going to be using a custom for number one, which is the white value. And now we have all of the updates here uh, in that white value. Anything that was white in that color map, that uh, color ID is now this new silver metal material. Um, it looks like we're getting some, uh, some artifacting around the head and stuff. If you make a really clean color ID, that will um, not happen. I don't think I did a very good job making that color ID. I did it too quick. And also we started with a relatively low resolution material. But So now we have a silver suit and this is a great, great use of the texture masking. You can mask out the texture there and get rid of these stripes. So now it's a pure metal suit if you'd like. It's a better example of that. We'll keep it there though. And now let's check out the other options we have. Under just one this is going to be without the numbers next to it. We have a lot of options. You can change the hue, saturation, lightness of an object. You can change the contrast, uh, the overlay color, etc. So in this case, bringing up the overlay blend, we'll add this overlay color to the material. And you can, of course, change that to any color you'd like. So we can give him maybe a green suit. Um, you can shift the roughness value as well. If uh, the metal you used or the material you used is too rough or le not rough enough, you can shift that. And uh, it's important to know as well that if you don't use the custom texture, you can still adjust the settings 
using this uh, options here. If we take down the blend, we've got our colors right here. Uh, you can adjust the saturation. This is similar to some of our other tools. You can do a, a heck of a lot with uh, without changing the using a custom material as well. But we are going to use our custom material for this one. Uh, now let's do something similar to the uh, other colors here. Let's see, we got two and three are both part of our suit, so I'm going to do a similar thing using the same metal. Select that we're going to be using custom materials for number two and number three. And now that we see the outcome here, we can adjust them similar in the same way we did for number one. Alright, now we've uh, pretty much changed the suit of Ethan entirely. We have a very metallic suit because I did use me metal for all three. If you use leather or something like that, then you can get a completely different look. I used the overlay uh, blending a lot because uh, metal, of course, this metal had no color value, so I couldn't use the hue saturation uh, shifting there. Um, overlay color looks great on metal because you can just change the, the actual color of the metal itself. Alright, so now we've got the skin and the hair left. Now, we're not going to use a custom material for the skin or the hair. Those are perfectly fine the way they are, but what we can do is change the look of them. Now, we could do an overlay blend on the skin and make them look, uh, I guess, like an Oompa Loompa or something or any other color, but instead, we can change the hue and the saturation. So, uh, if we wanted to, we could actually make uh, change his skin tone entirely to perhaps change his race. Alright, now we've changed uh, the race of the Ethan character. Or you can make him more tan, less tan, you can make him green, you can make him blue. You can do a lot with that. And uh, we can do a similar thing with number six here, which is going to be the hair. We didn't change this up here because I believe the material is not on that part of the hair. So let's do that now. And now we have cool Ethan. He's all space fied out with some crazy Hunger Games style hair or whatnot. Uh, and then when you're done with that, all you have to do is use our tool up here and save the texture. Now we're saving the texture because this is, of course, not a runtime optimized uh, material to use. You don't want to use this in your game. It will most likely crash your game. It will almost certainly crash uh, mobile games but desktop games as well, uh, so you definitely want to use that um, uh, only in the editor. And once you've got the material here, again, Unity has a bug, the metallic map doesn't always export, uh, or actually doesn't export as at all properly, so we're going to use the metallic roughness map, uh, and make sure that the metallic roughness is in the metallic just by dragging it in. It looks like it was proper in this one, sometimes it's not, so it's always important to double check, make sure the metallic roughness is in there. Once Unity fixes the export bug and the roughness value is properly put in the metallic uh, map and the opacity value is properly put in the albedo map, you'll no longer see these in our workflows. But for now, you have to uh, move that over just to make sure. And then bring the body over here and just bring these onto Ethan. Replace the texture changer with this new material. And you've got Ethan ready to go to be played in your game. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now, it's uh, it's a little daunting to create the color ID, but obviously the power of it is kind of insane. Um, you can change pretty much any legacy model you have from the asset store that you still want to use. If you, A lot of people have been buying our uh, PBR models from the Infinity series. That's at www.infinitypbr.com. Um, but they have all these old models that they want to continue to use. Using this tool, you can actually do just that. You can convert those legacy models into PBR and then use this texture changer to change out the textures a lot and get something that matches our stuff a lot more. Or, if you'd like, you can make our stuff match their stuff even more. So, whatever works for the game you're making, uh, this will definitely help you get there. Um, let us know if you have any questions or comments or requests or anything like that, uh, and we'd love to help you out. So talk to us on the forums. Uh, send us an email, and if you did like our stuff, please, please, please write a review. Give us a five-star rating 
so other people know that our uh, tools are and our models are high quality. It's tremendously important to us that you uh, give us those ratings. Uh, we can't get them without you, and uh, it's, it really is helpful um, for other users to, to know how good the, uh, the tools are. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.